Hi, welcome back to My Heroes. I'm Ave Pildes. Today we're going to be looking at the nudes of Lucy and Clark, Bill Brandt, and Robert Maplethorpe. The nude has been around since the beginning of time. In photography, it's been around since the 1850s. As soon as there were nudes in photography, there was porn. No porn today. In the late 50s, while my friends were passing around copies of Playboy magazine, I was looking at the nude images of Lucy and Clerk. Clerk's images were not about sex, but about contrast. His beach photos were terrific. The water playing over the nudes, the contrast between the motion of the water and the stillness of the nudes. I just thought that this was a new way of looking at nudes. I thought they were beautiful. You know, as a second image, we have the nudes that are looking like the water themselves, like waves. You know, they're the backs of nudes. They're just three butts, you know, like, or three bodies that are lying next to each other with the water at the top, water spilling over the nudes. Another wonderful photo. Then there's this gorgeous image of the nude and the, and the water playing over the nude, just using the water as a background and as a foreground uh, made these nudes special for me. And then the last one, which I think uh, has the water playing, you know, like the reflections of the water on the nudes and this wonderful shape, you know, that doesn't look like a nude anymore at all, except for the breasts. And uh, he didn't just shoot nudes at the beach. He also shot nudes in the forest with trees. And, you know, check out Lucien Clerc, French photographer. Uh, hasn't really gotten his due, but a really wonderful photographer. I next discovered Bill Brandt. He found a new language for his nudes. Distortion and contrast, contrast of size and looking at nudes close up. It was really very unusual. I spent a lot of time looking at his images. The first one up is, you don't even know it's a nude at all. It's a figure ground shift, the white parts being the figure, but you know, this stark change, this stark contrast between the figure and the ground, you know, it, it is an elbow and the hip, but you can hardly tell that. And the next image, which, which I was in love with for years, was this photograph of hands at the beach, you know, just fingers. And they were just so much like the rocks at the beach, too, that they were just amazing. I spent hours looking at this picture. I was mesmerized by it. Uh, then we have a, a spread from a magazine or maybe they're presented together. And here you have no idea that the, these are nudes at all. There's a, an elbow, a couple knees, maybe there's the back of legs and it's just so distorted and or the size is so different that it's just a composition of shapes. Beautiful, beautiful. The last one where it's most where you can actually tell that it's a nude is just another view. So the station point is at the top of the head, which you don't see, but you do see the breasts in the foreground. Then there's, because he's shooting with a wide angle lens, the shape goes back very quickly to the knees that are sticking up in the landscape against the rocks again and against the cliffs. A new way of looking at nudes. I really love Bill Brandt. Bill Brandt, you know, he was a, a German photographer who I guess became a British citizen, but uh, he shot fashion, he shot lots of things. All of these, these photographers who shot nudes also shot other things. In the 1970s, I started looking at Robert Maplethorpe. He was photographing male nudes with a fresh look. His photos were controversial. He was controversial. He turned the forbidden into art. His photos were banned. His shows were canceled. The museums were boycotted that were showing his shows. The shows were closed. It took a long time for him to be accepted. I've chosen pictures of Maper Thorpe's, while a little bit edgy, could not be banned and are not going to be banned by uh, Instagram or uh, uh, YouTube. So. The first one up is this division of, of the male nude. So he often shot male nudes, black and white together, black nude and a white nude. This one is a little different take on that because it's a single nude. He's divided the nude with lighting. 
So one side is black and one side is white. A really arresting image for me and quite beautiful. His next image was a, a shot that just really plays with the frame. It's a square image and it's a, a really well-built model who has got muscles, but it breaks up the space so that the positive and the negative of the space is playing with each other. It's a beautifully composed image and very powerful. And the model is sh shown here in a powerful position. The last one of Maplethorpe is just, you don't know what it is at all. It's so abstract. It's just a person who's bent over and has his head in between his knees and you see his elbows. So it's quite an abstract image. All three of these images are really pretty tame. If you're looking at Maplethorpe uh, nudes, I would, I would recommend that you look at Maplethorpe nudes. I think that they're very interesting. Some of them are, are a bit over the top or, or scary, or you can see why they were banned. But um, they're pretty tame now, considering how far along we've come in the last 50 years. So let's fast forward a little bit to my nudes. I was influenced by not only these three heroes, but lots of others. And I'll give them a shout out of those after we look at a few of my nudes. My first nude picture here is a contrast of shape and stripes. I really like dots and lines, so I use them in many of my pictures. Here we have a, a, a nude that's uh, standing in front of a, a striped background, and she's also wrapped in, in gauze. So there's a vibration between the sides of her body and the striped background, and also, you know, like a, a pull, uh, like I pulled out the, the white stripes and, and covered it, the body with those. So um, this picture is definitely about contrast. In my second image is a picture of a nude looking down. Other people have done this. In this case, you know, the focus is on her head and her breasts, but the movement of her elbows really give an upward swing to this photograph. My third image, which is a little racier, is again, I'm using stripes, but the stripes are from a painting of a friend. And um, uh, this is a painting of, uh, the, the background is of a comic strip. The body is in front of that. So there's a contrast to the linear structure and then the body. And then the, the nude is on a, a wooden horse. I think that the, the high heel shoes just give it a little extra oomph to show that it's a provocative image. And then the last image I have for today is one of my favorite nude images. It's a, it's a Valentine and it's back to the dots. So I put these paste up dots on the floor and the walls of my studio. And then I had a, the model put on a, a polka dotted dress, which she, uh, and turned around and made the shape of a heart. So that's why it's a Valentine. And then I stuck um, uh, dots on her body to bring the both the foreground and the background together. It's also very humorous. So I can tell you I was influenced by lots of lots of photographers, photographers who who shot nudes. And I'd like to give a shout out to some of those. And uh, certainly to Andre D. Dennis, who was a pinup photographer and shot a, shot a lot of um, pictures on the beach, shot pictures of Marilyn Monroe also before she was Marilyn Monroe. I wouldn't say that he was uh, a, a wonderful uh, fine arts photographer, but he was a pinup photographer and very popular in the 50s and the 60s. And then there was Imogene Cunningham, who shot nudes, and also Luis Rodriguez. Beautiful nudes, you know, not a well-known photographer, but accomplished. And Helmut Newton, one of my favorites, who was very popular in the 70s and the 80s. Edward Weston, Man Ray, and more. They all helped me find my voice. So I want to thank you for looking at uh, nudes today. Hope you liked them. And we'll see you back here next week for... Not more nudes, but more of my heroes. Ciao.